<clears throat> All right, I'm going to go ahead and call to order this uh, municipal audit committee meeting. We are noticed today from 11 to 12. Um, let's go ahead and start with the roll call, please. Mr. Rivera. Present. Ms. Allard. Ms. LaFrance. Here. Here. Ms. Domboski. Mr. Utrinka. Here, you got it right. Woohoo! And Ms. West. I'm here. Thank you. Great, thank you. All right, moving on in our agenda, we don't have any unfinished business for today, uh, but we do have two uh, new business items. First, starting with Internal Audit Report 2022-08, the PCARD Annual Audit. Um, so for this one, we'll go ahead and turn it over to um, Internal Audit to walk us through the findings and then turn it over to whoever in the administration would like to um, respond and then we'll have a discussion. So I'll turn it over to you, Mr. Chadwick. Thank you. Let me share my screen with you so I can we can bring up the report. Do you see the report? Yes. Very good. OK. Um, this report had five audit findings. Management was responsive to the audit findings and recommendations. Scroll down here. Um, here on page one. Or page two, we have our first finding questionable or prohibited P card purchases. Um, when I added up the total of these questionable and prohibited purchases, it came to almost $19,000, which in the grand scheme of things is not a lot of money. Uh, compared to the overall spend for the P card program, which this last uh, in 2021, the they spent um, 16.2 million dollars. Nonetheless, by looking at these things on a on a regular basis, it helps keep um, municipal employees aware that someone is looking. Now we found the. Questionable purchases included ca uh, cable and satellite television subscriptions, yoga memberships, uh, fitness trainer course, um, massage gun, uh, those types of things, some toaster ovens, coffee makers, microwave ovens, those types of purchases. Going down to finding two, uh, we had transactions that were split to circumvent the dollar limit. And we included a table regarding these transactions. Now, just to let you know, um, about uh, about a month ago, I guess it was at a pre-agenda meeting, the municipal manager asked all department heads to review uh, the policies and procedures regarding P card purchases. And uh, as I recall, she was uh, going to pass around a a list to, that you had to sign saying I reviewed these and that was due at the end of December, as I recall. So uh, pretty proactive in in making sure that they're very much aware of what are the policies and procedures regarding P card use. Uh, finding three. Uh, the purchases descriptions were not always adequate. Uh, you know, when you put down just something like an invoice number, that doesn't mean a whole lot when trying to describe the purchase. Um, or, you, or you put down reconciled for Mike Chadwick. But that doesn't describe the purchase. So uh, we talked about um, descriptions and, and having av adequate descriptions for these P card purchases, which actually compared to years ago, we're doing much, much better with with uh, descriptions for these purchases a lot better. I think Beverly would agree that purchases are being described in way more detail than they were previously. We have a uh, finding for the municipality has these mandatory annual supply contracts and we found that they weren't always used. Uh, not that something inappropriate was purchased. For example, you could have a, a department that purchases paper, but we have uh, maybe from Staples, but we have a contract to purchase paper from somebody else. So 
um, it's just that that a lot of times you'll get a better deal if you use the mandatory annual supply contracts. And then uh, finding five, we have um, more P cards were issued than needed. Uh, we found that 35 P card holders made five or less purchases. When you don't use your P card a whole lot, then maybe you don't need a P card. Uh, and management, like I said, was responsive to all the audit findings and recommendations. Um, Rochelle, I don't know if did you want to add anything to that? Uh, to the overall report or just that number five? Oh, just the overall report. The only thing I will add is <clears throat> Beverly and I are meeting bi-weekly to go over how many people do have P cards, the frequency of their use. Beverly is developing a um, an augmentation to the P card training, if you will, something, you know, like an annual, and I'm just saying annual, but it hasn't been solidified yet. Just it, it's in conceptual um, mode right now of just having pe people do a, an updated training, like maybe every couple years or whatever we determine um, based on talking with the municipal manager and others um, so that people are aware of of all these different issues. Also, we have been communicating on a regular basis that um, sometimes we want to use the P card for for things where people have a need their limit raised because we are trying to grow that program. So they are reaching out to Beverly and asking for approval to raise those P card limits. Beverly runs it through the buyers and whatnot and any type of um, charge that can be can be down the P card. We're doing that to do to uh, grow the program. Great. Uh, thank you so much uh, for walking us through that and for the administration responses. Um, I guess first I want to note for the record, we were joined by Ms. Tomboski at 1106. Um, is there any discussion on the audit? I'll go ahead and start, and then if other members want to put themselves in the queue, please just put yourself in the chat. Um, <clears throat> so this is an audit that we do annually um, for good reason, and I appreciate that. <clears throat> Mr. Chadwick, um, would you say that we, based off of the findings, sort of a comparatively annualized basis, that we are trending in the right direction with some of the issues that we commonly see? Uh, through the chair, yes, we are trending in the right direction. We're finding, particularly with uh, um, descriptions, uh, I know uh, the P card administrator, Beverly Culberson, she does periodic reviews of the transactions. That's not something that occurred, say, four or five years ago um, where uh, she has a query set up to help identify split or not a query, but a, a program through through the provider that will help identify split purchases. So I would say, yes, things are trending in the right direction. Um, yeah, I, I think we're doing we're doing better than we have in the past. Yes. Great, thanks. Um, and then I guess a follow up that I have to that <clears throat> is. Um, so is there. Uh, and I'm asking this question because I, I really don't know. I have a sense with such a, a large organization like the municipality. Um, is I don't think we're ever going to see an audit where there are no findings, right? Where there are no errors. Um, I just don't imagine that happening. And maybe, maybe, Mr. Chadwick, I'm being too pessimistic. You tell me. But um, is there sort of a, a level where this is what we expect to find every year because we're such a large organization? We issue so many P cards. We're just, we know we're going to have a certain level of errors of people maybe making transactions that they shouldn't. And so we shouldn't, you know, run around with our hair on fire. We should just try to manage these just like we would normally every year. Um, could you help describe what that might look like? Yeah, uh, through the chair, I, I agree with your assessment that we are a very large organization. We have, I 
I think we have about 2,800 employees. Um, some of these issues that you have are, are just a matter of, of training. Sometimes someone will buy something just because they, they didn't know or they didn't realize or, or didn't quite understand that they couldn't buy it. I think you always have some, some transactions. I mean, the goal is, yes, we like to have a perfect audit. And, but some of this up to judgment too, where one person may think, well, that's a, an appropriate transaction. Another person may say, eh, I don't know about that. Um, so there always might be some questionable transactions. Um, you know, uh, over the years, uh, um, when we first did this audit, we had all sorts of things. We kind of picked all the, the low hanging fruit, so to speak. And now we're, we're dealing with just a lot of the, um, I think we kind of have a baseline, so to speak, of like, well, here, here's the transactions that will we'll always have a few transactions. But like I said before, in the grand scheme of things, these are very, very few transactions. I, one of the hardest things is, is probably the split transactions. Those can be a little bit tricky sometimes. Um, but um, ideally, we'd like to have it perfect. I, I don't know if we'll ever have that. Um, did I answer the question? <laughs> You did, yes, I appreciate okay. that. Um, all right, I'm going to go ahead and go to the queue. I see Ms. LaFrance. Thank you, Mr. Chair. <clears throat> One second. Sorry about that. Um, and thank you, Mr. Chadwick, for the information and Ms. Elder, too, for the conversation about the findings. In the past, we've talked about the role of the supervisor, and I apologize, I had to step out briefly to deal with an addendum issue, and, and if you covered this, I apologize, but we've talked about the role of the supervisor a little bit in reviewing um, those key card purchases and approving. And just so I remember correctly, when an employee, um, they they make, they use their P card and then later they submit an electronic report and it goes to the supervisor for approval. Is that correct? Or is there a pre-authorization? Um, would you like me to answer that or you want the purchasing department to answer that? Oh, whoever. Probably be best for the purchasing department. I can answer Thanks. it. But, yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. Thanks. Thanks, Mike. I'm actually going to let Beverly answer that. So um, through the chair, Ms. LaFrance, I'll Thanks. turn it over to Beverly. So different departments do different things. Some supervisors do approve the transactions and some departments, their physical, um, their finance people will actually approve it according to the money that's involved in with the money that they're using toward that transaction. So it kind of varies. You know, the health department has a physical department, but like here in purchasing, you know, it's going to be um, management type situation or um, I know Police and fire, they have supervisors that approve stuff and also physical people. So it just depends on how the department is set up hierarchy wise. OK, thanks. And so I imagine, too, from yeah, what you said, that there's a schedule of authorizations depending on um, the dollar value of the, the item or the or what's being procured. Um, and so for like the training piece, I guess if it's more after the fact, it seems like the supervisors are a good um, mechanism for identifying where training is needed. I mean, right when something happens, if coming forward for approval. And so um, is the training, I, I'm assuming then there's like a special training for the supervisors as well, so that they are catching um, some of the items that aren't supposed to be purchased at all or with a P card. Um, I just you know want to make sure since we've talked about this piece in the past that like supervisors have the tools they need or are able to um, correct some of those instances when they happen or provide you know some guidance right away so that it doesn't like come to light months down the road. Health training uh goes through um is the it's a it is a basic overall of the whole program for p cards and approvers so it's just going back through sometimes and doing a refresher or reminding folks that they um 
you know, and every department's a little bit different because of what we do is, you know, what we do and what the police and fire department does is totally different or what the health department does is totally different. So it just depends on how, what their, their mission is and what they're doing. Sure. And that, how, yeah. And how that management is. sees that, you know, that purchase may have been, it may be questionable in mine and Mike's eyes, but then it may not be questionable in the department's eyes. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. And I appreciated um, Mr. Rivera's question about, you know, can we ever expect that there won't ever be issues? And, you know, I've worked in the private sector and these, um, these same things come up there and, um, you know, they're not, um, I think, unique by any means to the municipality, mm -hmm. but also that the training piece um, is really important and for supervisors, I think, to, to be able to um, provide that really clear guidance, you know, to employees. Cause it's, you know, it's one of the things, of course, we all know the public sees that and like, what's going on, what's going on there with yoga. Um, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thank, thanks so much. Thank you. Uh, all right. And is there any other discussion on the PCART audit before we move on? All right, not seeing anyone. Thanks so much. Um, so we're going to go ahead and move on then to our next item under new business, which is the 2023 municipal audit plan. We're going to be discussing this uh, in, we're going to have two different separate discussions here on the audit plan. First is we're going to start with a special um, a memo that came from internal audit, audit regarding Mr. Gerace and the audit scoping. Um, <clears throat> we're going to start with that and then we'll move on to the actual plan itself. Um, so for this, I will ask internal audit to just walk us through that memo that you sent us dated December 14th, and then we will have a discussion on it. OK, thank you uh, through the chair. Um, we. We did a review, uh, if you recall, a couple months ago we were asked to uh, look at the activities of Joe Gerace over at the health department um, when he was there. We talked to a variety of people at the health department, looked at some records, and uh, put together this memo. Uh, one of the things that came out was that they expressed a frustration uh, when they received invoices, but they had no purchase order. Or or rather, the purchase order had expired or there were insufficient funds to pay the vendors. Um, that was something that came up frequently. And I asked, well, did you did you did you feel like there was fraud that occurred? They didn't say that there was any fraud necessarily that occurred, but instead they expressed a general sentiment of just poor management and a lack of adequate communication. Um, it felt like that uh, when we reviewed these invoices and had these interviews, uh, the, the review of the invoices and, and the interviews it, it suggested that Mr. Gerace obligated the municipality prior to having the vendors work authorized through the proper contracting processes. In other words, for example, um, a vendor may have told, well, just continue providing that service, we'll make things work out. Um, so when they received these invoices, there was nothing that, uh, there was no PO or line item so that they could be paid, which was very frustrating for, for the staff. Um, when looking at procurement card issues or procurement card purchases, we didn't really see anything out of the ordinary. They seem to be very typical like purchases. Um, you didn't have a whole lot of uh, e card purchases. And uh, the ones that we did identify, uh, there was only one purchase that looked questionable. It was for uh, some t-shirts that were purchased and that's considered a disallowed purchase. It, it looked like it was personal clothing uh, and personal clothing is not permitted unless it's by a labor agreement. Um, 
And also, Mr. Drace did not attend any PCAR training. Um, we also looked at, uh, came up during the course of our review, uh, there was a, a resource request that was made through the EOC um, for a mass care site supervisor. And this resource request asked for a very specific individual by name from LeMay Engineering who is providing temporary, uh, temporary employee services. Um, now, asking it by name is not unique. A lot the resource request usually asked for a specific person by name because LeMay Engineering was not in the uh, recruiting business. Um, now, the resource request uh, listed the duties for this person, such as overseeing uh, COVID-19 congregate shelter sites, uh, coordinating and communicating with contracted on-site managers, uh, verifying shelters are safe and working order, uh, those types of things. When we looked at the individual's resume, it was pretty sparse and only listed two jobs. And um, the first job was with JS Marketing. And um, as we have a footnote in that uh, report, that where um, according to the Alaska Department of Commerce, Community and Economic Development, Mr. Drace was the director, president, secretary, shareholder, and treasurer of JS Marketing. And the other job listed was Visit Healthcare, March 2021 to present. And uh, it included a few details under that. Now, when we looked at the timesheets for this individual, we didn't look at all the timesheets. We just took a sample from November through February of 2022. The time uh, sheet showed 512 hours were charged at an hourly rate of $41.13 paid to LeMay Engineering. Of these hours, 439 of the hours were charged to staff meetings. That's all the line item said is staff meetings. Um, and then 64 hours were charged to, uh, were not charged to anything. It was just, I don't know what it meant. It was just unknown. Uh, this person was, de they call it demobilized or let go uh, on August 15th, 2022. Um, we just had some other general comments to make. Um, just in talking to people and we did not, we did not get into personnel matters. We did not get into hiring and firing of people. And uh, there's a lot of legal implications with that. But just in our personal observation, it, it just seems like there was a very hostile and an unstable work environment with people coming and going and fired and some just leaving and quitting. Um, there just seemed to be a general sense of, of unprofessionalism uh, based upon some comments that were made. Um, there was a, a comment made that allegedly uh, Mr. Drace was administered some vaccines. Uh, without necessarily having the proper certifications or qualifications to do so. And there just appear, appeared to be a very general lack of understanding or, or adherence to proper contract or grant processes and administration. As I said previously, obligating the municipality prior to having a, uh, a PO renewed. So those are just the, the things that we observed or, or noted in our, um, in our scoping with uh, Mr. Drace. Um, I'm open to any questions that I might be able to answer. Thank you, Mr. Chadwick, for uh, doing that work. Um, this has been a very helpful uh, and eye-opening memo for me. You know, when I, when I read this memo, I, I see things like liability, skirting the rules, and making a lot of questionable contracting decisions. And it, it does leave me pretty seriously concerned about the tenure of the former director and the continuing, uh, the possible continued impacts from that tenure. So um, just based off, based off of your expertise, uh, Mr. Chadwick, um, what type of audit could you do based off of the scoping that is falls in line with the um, what internal audit can do. If I had to pick something, it would have it would probably be in the 
Well, let me back up. You know, some of these things are just based upon hearsay. And so it's really hard to document hearsay. One person may have heard something, another person may have heard something else. And unless you're there with a video recorder, it's hard to, or tape recorder, it's, it's just hard to know what exactly happened. Um, I would say that, you know, the P cards probably wouldn't do anything with the P cards. Now, those look pretty good. Um, if I had to look at anything, it'd probably be some of the grants uh, that went out the door um, and how, how those were administered. Um, it got a little messy uh, between the transition between the when things were transferred from the EOC over to the health department. Um, but if I had to pick anything, it would be uh, some of the grants that uh, that uh, Mr. Drace was working with. Um, uh, that's probably what I would I would start with. Um, did I answer the question? You did, yes. Um, so definitely we'll look forward to having that discussion more broadly when we talk about the audit plan itself. Any sure. other um, discussion um, or questions regarding this memo? Yeah, Ms. LaFrance. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you, Mr. Chadwick, for your work here. Um, I'm surprised how quickly given your heavy workload in your department you were able to do this and I very much appreciate the information. I actually have a question more for the administration, the municipal manager, um, Ms. Zimboski, if, if she is still available as to how the administration has um, attempted to address these issues or is addressing these issues. And I understand too that like, for example, transactions without proper POs, it may be a matter then of, of going back and um, doing a PO so the payment can go through. Um, are there issues with funding availability? And then too, and I, and I agree with um, Mr. Rivera's comments about concerns of liability and um, Frankly, I'm a little bit freaked out about that part of vaccines allegedly being administered without proper qualifications. And I think, Mr. Chair, you know, the assembly is going to need to have some discussion about how we can perhaps work with the administration to mitigate any um, or address any of those questions. Um, but going back to a question for the administration, like with the individual who was um, contracted through LeMay and the time that was coded to staff meeting, I don't know what to make of that. I know that sometimes there are limitations to what code can be timed to, but like, wouldn't that have been over? Wouldn't that have needed to go to someone for approval? It seems like when something like that, unless that's a, a typical thing, 439 hours charged to staff meeting seems like a flag. So I'm curious, um, you know, to what is the um, administration's general and specific response to the the scoping document here? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um. Could, could I uh, could I jump in, Mr. Uh, Chair? Sure. If you have something before Mr. Mosky speaks, go ahead. Yeah, I, I can maybe uh, just respond to one or two of those things. On the uh, time card that we looked at, Ms. LaFrance, um, it appeared that you were able to enter in specific activities onto the time card, and so it wasn't just limited to maybe one or two options because the time card did have other line items that varied, but they weren't used. Um, and the time card was approved. Um, I, I guess it wasn't reviewed very well, but it was approved. Um, regarding those those POs that had gone through with uh, that didn't have the prop that had expired uh, or didn't have the uh, enough funding, those I think believe I, I I can't say for sure, but a lot of that has been addressed by the health department uh, who have um, 
uh, amended the PO or amended the contract to have additional uh, line items added uh, on the PO um, or uh, the assembly uh, authorized additional funding back in July for a lot of these things. And, and so, so I believe some of that funding has been used. So the health department has really jumped on uh, trying to address these things and, and get them taken care of. And I believe they've addressed a lot of them already. Um, anyway, I just wanted to clarify that. Thanks, that's helpful. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Can I respond? Go ahead. Thank you so much. I appreciate this um, review by internal audit. I will say, um, Ms. LaFrance, uh, when I saw this, I think you and I are probably honing in on the same type of things. So it's my intent to have HR and legal both review some of the things that internal audit has flagged. Um, I am concerned. I want to make sure fraud, you know, didn't happen. If fraud did happen, then uh, we will uh, we will address it accordingly and through any legal mechanisms that we potentially have at our disposal. So for me, you know, audits are always an opportunity for us to um, either validate where our processes are working or find areas of improvement in our processes. I think Mr. Chadwick, uh, you know, kind of touched upon some of the um, process improvements and potentials that the health department is already you know working through and i will tell you i think we've had these conversations um, briefly before is we have modified some of our uh contract review processes to make sure um, we have lots of eyes on things we're double checking to make sure things have had the appropriate approval process so we're making sure that you know the right uh the right lingual language is in there we're making sure that there's the right um, insurance requirements that are met. So we have um, really worked to make some improvements before this came out, but I think this just reinforces the fact that those improvements are necessary and that there are things that we need to follow up on. And so again, I am certainly, um, I, I apologize because I'm trying to do my on base at the same time and build the assembly agenda at the same time that I'm doing this meeting. Um, so I didn't have a chance to pre-read this before this meeting. So as Mr. Chadwick was talking, I was I was going through it, but it is absolutely my intent um, to have a follow up discussion um, with the HR department and with the Department of Law on this particular uh, memo. Thank you, Ms. Zamboski and Mr. Chair, if if I may request that um, we keep this perhaps as an unfinished business item and return to it at our next meeting. So that we could get an update on what those actions are or what um, the response is from legal and HR. I would uh, appreciate that follow up. Sure, thanks, Ms. LaFrance. We can do that. <clears throat> um, any other discussion on this memo before we turn to the uh, 2023 plan? OK, not seeing any, then let's go ahead and turn to that. So um, Mr. Chadwick, if you want to walk us through the plan briefly, then we will have any discussion and then we will take our recommendation vote. OK, uh, do you have the plan in front of you or should I put it onto the screen? Um, let's put it on the screen for the purposes okay. of the recording. OK, let me put it on the screen then. Let's take a second here. OK. Is that up on your screen? Yes, we can see the Excel sheet. Oh, whoops. OK. OK, there we go. It's on the screen. Very good. OK, these are the. Uh, these are the first of all, I sent out a request. I think it was at the end of October uh, to all the department heads, directors, uh, administration um, and to the assembly asking for audit requests or anything that they thought that needed to be looked at. I don't know what was in the water this year, but we received an overwhelming response, a, a, a bigger response than we've ever got ever received. Um, we received a total of 18 requests in a normal year. We might get, I don't know seven or eight, something like that. So we received a lot more requests than we typically get. So I had to filter through as we, we certainly can't do all of those. And so I filtered through those a little bit. Um, so here we have the audit plan for 2023. 
first of all, we're, we're wrapping up an audit of training center operations. That's over at the fire department. And we're wrapping up an audit of accounts receivable. The training center one is currently in the writing process and the accounts receivable is getting probably near the end of the month. He'll start the writing process on that. Um, our 2023 audits, we have one of the fire department, contract billing and collection services. Um, they, the health department, they asked for two audits, uh, one for 2023 and one for 2024. Um, and that's one for 2023. They wanted the uh, WIC program. Um, then we have uh, invoice processing for the police department. Uh, AWU wanted us to look at their key and lock controls. Uh, they, they, um, we did that audit a number of years ago. I want to say it was probably in 2010 uh, when we looked at their, it's called their, their proximity card when you pull up a little card to the meter. They want us to take a look at that again. Um, it's been a while since we looked at the Ombudsman's office. I think it was last done in 2017. And we try to periodically we look at the Ombudsman's office and the clerk's office. So we have the Ombudsman's office. We have grant labor tracking. And that actually might touch upon some of the, not just. Uh, it might touch upon uh, some of the grants over at the health department, but this is. They're supposed to track their labor for federal requirements and. Um, they ha they wanted to make sure that the labor was being tracked properly to comply with federal requirements for federal grants. Um, collection management at the library. This isn't cash collection. This is their like for their books. Um, for their uh, for their media or um, you know the things that a person goes to the library for to, to look up to research so they want us to look at their collection management maintenance operation this is a uh, key key controls uh, basically your, your physical keys who's got a key and who doesn't and how are we tracking that and um, just what's the status of, of, of our keys out there um, language access program. Uh, we recently received posters for that language access program and that we were asked to post in um, a visible place within our office areas. We've never looked at the language access program. That that could that could be interesting. Uh, the McDonald's Center um, that was requested by uh, Parks and Recreation and um, the municipal manager. Uh, we've looked at that a couple times over the years. The last time we looked at that, I think was in 2017. They do have a new, uh, a newer manager out there, and I believe there's been some uh, changes on the board. So it might be a good, well, I think it is a good thing to look at that one. The port asked us to look at their uh, contract compliance with their modernization program. And then IT asks us to look at in for public sector access controls. This is one of their lack of a better term computer programs. They just want to know are people being taken off, are people being removed? How are we controlling the access to this? And and are we uh, do we have proper controls over that? We um, the purchasing department. We received a request for sole source purchases. Um, to, at the purchasing property, uh, this would be a follow up audit uh, based upon our audit that we released. I think it was in earlier this year. Uh, I think it was in February of this year that we released an audit. So it'd be a follow up audit, basically picking up where the last one left off, going from about July of 2021 up to the up to the end of this year. Um, that'd probably be a good cutoff the end of the year. Um, and then cash control at solid waste services. We've done a cash control audit before at solid waste services. It's been a long time. Uh, I would say it's been at, at least 10 years since we've done since we've looked at any cash control at solid waste services. We have our sunset audits, um, the Port of Alaska Modernization Program and Design Advisory Board. That's a new sunset audit. Uh, we've never uh, that'll be the first time for them. And then we have Public Safety Advisory Commission and Watershed and Natural Resources. Then we have a few uh, just routine, routine audits, primarily the PCARD program and the uh, PCARD rebate. And then we have 
we, we, we also participate in some year end inventories. For example, I think on January 4th of this uh, next year, I'll be uh, participating with BDO on doing uh, inventory over at the maintenance warehouse for AWU. Um, a couple special studies. We have uh, the Assembly Council, uh, basically Dean Gates's office, and then um, look at emergency procurements and, and the controls over emergency procurements and how that's worked. Um, I'm open to any questions, thoughts, ideas, whatever you may have. Great, thank you, Mr. Chadwick. Um, yeah, I think o over the years of uh, being on this committee, this certainly looks like a very aggressive audit plan. So um, <laughs> I would uh, agree. In fact, I, I meant to use the word aggressive audit plan. It's a very aggressive audit plan. <laughs> <laughs> so definitely want to get into um, the uh, labor and ability to complete this audit. But first, before we do that, um, I want to start with any changes folks may want to make to this already aggressive audit plan. And um, in fact, uh, I will go ahead and start with two changes that I have. One is just based off of that most previous discussion we had, and then one is from a member um, who wanted me to bring up a specific audit request so they didn't bring it up in time for the um i think you had asked us to get audit requests in by last week or something like that and they didn't get it in time for that um so i'll start with the hopefully the easier one which is the um audit request that you had mentioned earlier regarding grants um during I don't know if you had a specific timetable or if it's during all of Mr. Durace's tenure, um, but just I guess based off of what we're seeing here, do you think that audit would fit neatly into any of the audits already scheduled or do you think that would require a specific and separate audit? Mr. Chadwick. I think, I think that would require a specific and separate audit. I don't think it really fits under the grant labor tracking. Okay. Uh, we could put something underneath the Anchorage Health Department and just call it grant management and kind of leave it general like that. Um, and then we, when we get over there, we could focus in on specific grants um, and, do, and do something like that. OK. Um, got it. And then um, I guess before I make any any or motions, um, I'll just have the full discussion and then we'll make motions after that. So the second audit um, that I was possibly interested in adding there, there has been a request um, and it sort of goes with the idea of the sole source purchase follow up audit. Um, there was a request to, um, to do uh, focus on one specific audit. Uh, or rather sole source on top of sort of looking at the holistic picture and that one specific audit that was brought to my attention a request was was an audit on the denali fsp llc contract and sort of doing a beginning to end sort of step-by-step -step audit um i don't think we've really seen an audit like that that focuses on a single contract, but I think there is a particular interest um, among some members to really look at that audit and just get a better understanding of or rather contract and get a better understanding of what happened with that contract. Um, I guess similar question. Do you foresee that fitting into any of the audits that we have on the plan or do you see that as a specific and separate audit? And I guess okay. adding on to that, is that even sort of something that within the scope of internal audit that you would do? Yeah, I mean, we do contract compliance audits um, all the time. I don't. I would see that as a, a specific audit. It doesn't really fit into anything that's already on here. OK, got it. All right, then um, I guess I'll go ahead and just start making motions and then we can we can go from there. So I will go ahead and um, 
make a motion to add a audit under the Anchorage Health Department. Um, and I will ask Mr. Chadwick for the language, but specifically dealing with review of grants uh, during Mr. Gerace's tenure as described by Mr. Chadwick. Second, this is Ms. LaFrance. Thank you. Is there any discussion on the motion? Go ahead, Ms. Domboski. Uh, thank you. I think it would be helpful considering. I think we might. Uh, I, I would like to look at more than just Mr. Drace's term. I mean, if we're going to look at it, I would like to do a sampling of grant compliance for all of 2022 in the Anchorage Health Department. I think that would be helpful and I think it would um, capture everything you're looking for or you, if you want to extend it beyond 2022 that's fine but um, I would like to have a bigger time frame versus just a very small window I think it will be helpful so I would um, either ask the, the the mover to extend your time frame or I can make a supplemental motion Thanks. I am fine with July 1, 2021 to 2022. I'm fine with that. Does, does that make sense to you, Mr. Chadwick? Yeah, I'm, I'm fine with that. I mean, that would cut us all 2022. Yeah. OK. All right, any other discussion on that motion? OK, not seeing any, then um, Let's go ahead and have a roll call vote, please. Mr. Rivera? Yes. Ms. Allard? Ms. LaFrance? Yes. Ms. Domboski? Yes. Sorry, Ms. Domboski, I, could, I couldn't hear you. Oh, that was a yes. Thank you. Yes, okay, thank you. Mr. Utrenka? Yes. And Ms. West? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so that audit has been added to the plan. Um, so the second audit um, that I wanted to discuss was the Denali FSP LLC audit. Um, so I'll go ahead and make a motion to add that um, under, I, I assume that would be purchasing department. Um, and I will ask Mr. Chadwick to assist with the exact language that, that should be added, but I think folks hopefully understand the scope of that one. So I'll make that motion. Is there a second? Second, Ms. LaFrance. Thank you. Moved and seconded. So let's go ahead and move on to discussion. Is there any discussion on that audit? I see you typing. Go ahead, Ms. Domboski. So sorry, I, I'm trying to do two things at once. Can you just repeat for me the motion? Yeah, so the motion is specific to doing a um, audit on the Denali FSP LLC contract. Okay, thank you. I have no questions. Okay, thank you. Um, thank you. All right. Not seeing any other discussion. Let's go ahead and do a roll call vote. Mr. Rivera? Yes. Ms. Allard? Ms. LaFrance? Yes. Ms. Domboski? Yes. Mr. Utrenka? Yes. And Ms. West? Yes. Thank you. Great, thank you. So that uh, motion has been approved. All right, I'll go ahead and open it up if anyone has any other discussion, any other motions they'd like to make before we take our final recommendation vote. Go ahead, Ms. Domboski. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I just want to, you know, thank uh, internal audit and the members of the committee. I think um, oftentimes when people see big audit lists or they see audits coming into their apartments, sometimes they get nervous. This is not this is not some, meant to be something negative. It's an opportunity for the administration and the legislative body and the public to understand uh, some of our processes, what goes on in, in city government. And also, if we find opportunities for improvement, it's an opportunity for us to talk about what we found and uh, create processes to make sure that we are following 
uh, not only the code, but the, uh, the proper approval processes and and spending limitations and all those things. So um, I just keep trying to get people to embrace audits. And I think um, Mr. Chadwick has heard me at many, many, many directors meetings telling the directors how much I love audits. And I think this is an opportunity. So I really want to kind of change the narrative around not audits and, and be something that is welcome, welcomed by departments. And I think that's what you're seeing in, in the response to the number of audits <laughs> requests we've had this year. Mike's laughing because he hears people tell me, he hears me tell people all the time, I wish I was an auditor. So um, I just want to thank the, the committee and I thank the department because their work is, is really very valuable to not only what the assembly does, but to what the administration does. So thank you for that. Great, thank you, Ms. Domboski. Uh, Ms. Alger, and then I'll go to you, Mr. Chadwick. Thank you, through the chair. Um, <clears throat> Mr. Chadwick, it looks like you will be in purchasing quite a bit this year, which we are actually very happy about. If you recall, when I first came on board, I asked you to, to audit absolutely everything you possibly could with, with purchasing. So I'm happy that my wish is coming true. Um, we do have... <laughs> yes, I did. Uh, we do have uh, extra space down here, so feel free to to be here as much as you like, and our door is wide open to you, and we look forward to working with you this year. Thank you. Great, thank you. Go ahead, Mr. Chadwick. Uh, with the addition of these two audits, um, and with the resources that I have, I, I think we might want to remove one or two audits from the program. Um, and I, I suggest that we move the we move the invoice processing with APD, and then the contracted and billing collection services with the fire department. Um, I think, uh, in, in a large part, Treasury uh, does a lot of work with the fire department on those billing services, um, and perhaps we could remove those and maybe put them off for a later year. Um, but you know. As, as you mentioned previously, this is a very aggressive audit program or audit plan for next year. And uh, I just think it'd be more realistic if we moved it, removed to, with the addition of two that we removed two. Thank you. I, I don't have any objection to that. And I guess um, I will go ahead and, and just open up the floor to see if any members have an objection in lieu of doing a formal motion or vote. Okay, I see no objections from Ms. Domboski. I'll just go ahead and pause for a second and see if anyone else wants to raise an objection. Otherwise, I will just take that as a consensus from the committee that we can go ahead and remove those audits. Okay, I think that's what I'm hearing. So yeah, thank you, Mr. Chadwick, for that su suggestion. Let's go ahead and remove those audits. Thank you, I'll remove those two and then add the other two. Great. All right, so we're getting down to our last few minutes. I'm not seeing any other discussion, uh, so I guess before we take a vote, just want to again thank you, Mr. Chadwick, for um, all of the work compiling this and then looking forward to seeing all of these audits next year. And then perhaps we're going to have a record number of audit committee meetings next year. We'll see. Um, OK, so with that, let's go ahead. Do um, actually, I think we need a motion first. So um, can I uh, I'll go ahead and make a motion to recommend approval of the 2023 uh, audit plan uh, for the, to the assembly. If I can get a second to that. Second, Ms. LaFrance. Thank you. Uh, any discussion on the motion? Okay, not seeing any. Let's go ahead and do a roll call vote. Mr. Rivera? Yes. Ms. Allard? Ms. LaFrance? Yes. Ms. Domboski? Yes. Mr. Utrinka? Yes. And Ms. West? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so that motion passes. So um, this will be before the assembly. When exactly, Mr. Chadwick? Are you thinking you'll get it on the 20th? Um, well, on the 20th, I don't, I think it, I prefer not to put things on the agenda, and I think, believe the deadline's already passed for the 20th. And so I, I I would anticipate the agenda for uh, the January, is it 10th meeting? Yeah, I believe it is January 10th. Okay. And I, I think that'd be okay. Would you like me to send you, uh, Mr. Chair, just the, the draft to take a quick look to make sure I captured everything right before I submit it? 
Sure, please. Okay, I'll send that to you. Okay. Okay, wonderful. Thank you. All right, so that going back to our agenda, that completes all of our new business. We don't have any other business. So we'll go ahead and move to audience participation. Are there any members of the public who would like to participate? If there are any members of the public on a phone, um, it is, I believe, star six to unmute yourself. Okay, I'm not seeing any members of the public. Mr. Chadwick? I just had one thing to bring up just to let you know that we'll be releasing an audit today that you'll probably get later this afternoon regarding the Alaska Permanent Capital Management Company contract. As you recall, that was an audit that was requested by the mayor a couple months ago, and um, we've completed that audit. And just in a nutshell, we didn't have any findings or recommendations. We found that it was being the contract was being properly managed. OK, thank you, Mr. Chadwick. Looking forward to reviewing that. Uh, Ms. LaFrance. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and just a final comment. Um, just thank you to Mr. Chadwick and to your team for all your work. I am still um, thinking about that 18 audit request number and <laughs> very much appreciate your responsiveness and um, willingness to reprioritize, you know, so that we can move forward with some of these things that are important to the assembly and to the administration. So thank you very much. Thank you. All right, with that, um, thanks to everyone. I will go ahead and adjourn this meeting. Thank you, Felix. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Thanks, all.